Hey guys, this is Amy here with Hailbound Company and Sublimation and More. And in this video, I'm doing a take two of the raggy patches. Um, if you remember in the first video, I showed you how to do the lovely Texas hat, which I don't have here with me, but I also showed you this one um, using um, the poly linen material and other materials. This time I am showing you guys how to um, how to um, and use a plotter to cut out what you need the shapes and whatnot and because um, last time I believe I told you that you could actually if you don't have a, a vinyl cutter or a plotter you could just put the scissor adhesive straight into your printer to um, trace out your cut so you could cut it more accurately well this time I'm gonna actually put it through my plotter and then I'm gonna cut out my shapes that way and we'll go ahead and go there now so we can show you guys how quickly and easy that is to do Okay, so here are all the finished pieces that I ended up cutting. I already weeded the ovals and I just cut extras in case I messed up a few. Um, I'm, doing, I'm doing a uh, glitter oval patch on this glitter, black glitter ponytail hat. I thought that would look really cute. And then for, <clears throat> and then I, the squares are just extras. I wasn't sure if I was gonna want oval or square. And then for this one, I'm actually going to do the letter H for my last name. And I just wanted to show you guys how easy that is to weed. So let's get our weeding tool. Okay, so I went ahead, okay, so I went ahead and um, got a these little um, this little cutting board mat. It's like a thin piece of plastic you can get from any of the home goods stores. I just like weeding on that because it makes it easier. Let's see if I can show you guys. So I'm just going to weed this real quick so that you can see how easy it is. Again, this is the Caesar adhesive that you use with foils. And in this video, I'm actually going to use foil instead of a sublimation method. Now I'm going to use the sublimation method on the Caesar glitter. I know it's kind of hard to see in the lighting up from the camera. So I'm just going along and finding where my edges are and pulling it to weed it off. This is really good adhesive guys for this. I'm, I'm so glad I discovered this because I will never go back to the to the other stuff which was the heat and bond that you can get. I mean if that is your last resort because you don't have any of this or you're waiting certainly by all means go ahead and try that but I promise once you compare the two you'll always want to use the Caesar um, Easy Weed Adhesive. Oops I cut my H, my, my H off on that one. So we're going to make that our adhesive that goes to the hat and we're going to use that one for the foil. Okay, so this is what the, this is what's going to go on the white hat, which I don't know. I mean, generally I have these ideas come in my head and I don't know how they're going to work out. So for the white hat, we're going to still do it as a raggy patch style, but I'm going to use foil and I chose to use this blue foil to kind of match my company theme. So again, with the raggy patches, um, the, the, the ragging of the material takes is a little time consuming, about five minutes or so, depending on how detailed, um, how detailed it is. But for this one, so we're going to do the H first. I think we're going to start with that. So for this one, I want to go ahead and press the H first on the material and get it stuck so that I can weed or cut and weed around it. Okay. So for the foil method, you're definitely going to want to press 
press on there and I'm just gonna go and go like that all right and you want to press this Caesar easy weed to get my instructions the Caesar easy weed you press for um, you do a pre-press for three to five uh, two to three seconds and then and then you do a final press of about 10 seconds so this is the Caesar easy weed adhesive you can get this from heat press nation and I'll go ahead and post the link to that okay so we got to switch this over to the press because this press is set for sublimation all right so we're over here on the other press hopefully you guys can see this okay I'll just turn it that way so you all can see okay so you only need a few second press for this and for this stuff you'll want to use your Teflon sheet for the adhesive doesn't have to be heavy pressure and it's just going to be oops, not too light so again it's going to be for just a few seconds and i've got you on a sideway view over there just long enough to heat to adhere the um the glue and as you can see you can see how black it is with the glue stuck on there so now what we want to do we want to cut a piece of foil now there's a couple different tricks you can do with foil um, you can lay the foil straight on there in this particular thing because this is kind of a raggedy patch thing I want the foil to look really distressed as well so how you do that is I'm just getting my foil off here my tape I'm going to just cut a piece of foil, save that as backup. Make sure you don't lay your foil accidentally on top of it while it's hot or it will stick. All right, so now I've got my piece of foil and the size of that is. Now to get it at more aggressive, like um, raggy style, I'm just gonna crinkle it. You just crinkle it. Okay. With the foil, you lay it on top with the shiny side of the color of the foil face up I don't know if you guys and if you have never done before before it's definitely addictive um, I was in Hobby Lobby tonight and I happened to notice that Hobby Lobby carries foil in there now it's by the Cree Cut brand that was interesting all right so we're gonna go for the full 10 seconds this time oops don't mean to shake y'all sorry yay it's got a bunch of the glitter around it so you can see the distress look already on it you can take your now this is black material so you're probably gonna have a bunch of the extra foil the glitter particles 
around it. You can take your lint roller and try to get as much of it off as you can. This material, I got up the clearance section, by the way, at Hobby Lobby for a couple dollars. So um, I chose, I wanted a black to make them raggy. All right, so next now is to go ahead and rag it out. Those scissors don't do well with material. All right, so now to, ra to rag it out. We want to cut as close, I mean, not too close, but kind of close. So what I like to do is just kind of give myself a bordering area to start. You don't want to cut it too short in case you want lots of fringe. So, or fray, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just kind of going around kind of seeing what I want to do with it. Go in a little thin and go in a little more on this side. And this is going to fray really nice. This material, I can tell, I could tell, but when I bought it, it was going to fray nice. So when you get material that frays really easy like this, it just makes it so much easier. The burlap stuff, especially the one you get from Hobby Lobby, can be a little difficult. Basically, you're just wanting to pull as many strings as you can. And for the sake of the video, we're going to go ahead and speed this part up. Okay, so the fraying is all done, and the next step is is to eliminate the no-so so the fraying doesn't unravel anymore. And with that, I like to use the Dritz fray, che fray Check. When you put it on on some fabric, it's going to look like it's going to leave a stain, but I promise it does not. And all you want is just a little tiny bit around the edges. You just go around the edges. Also, when you put the the easy weave, the easy weed adhesive on there, it's also going to keep it from fraying to us. So you're just giving it double the whammy, especially if you're selling this to customers. The extra, the extra reassurance that you know it's not going to fall apart is definitely going to be good for you. Sorry, I'm concentrating. 
So you just go all the way around the edges. And a little bit is all it takes. All right, so the next step is, is they tell you to let this dry 24 hours, but I've kind of found a hack for it. And that is to just let it sit underneath your press, um, whatever degrees it's on, and you don't close it. You just let it sit for about five minutes and that will uh, get it dry. So we'll come back when it's done drying. Okay, we're back and I fully let it dry for the five minutes underneath the press. And as you can see, it, dry, it dried pretty well. Just getting some of those extra strings off. Okay, so now the next step we want to do is we will want to give it a the three second press to the second piece of adhesive on the back. So we're gonna go over to the other press for that. All right, so we're wanting to just line this up as best as we can on the back. Get that adhesive on, going on there. We're gonna give it that three second press at the 300 degrees, which is what Caesar recommends for their adhesive. I know it's hard to see with the glare. There we go. Oops. And I went a little bit longer being distracted. Ah. So the adhesive is on there. You can go ahead and pull it off. Pull the protective coating off if you wanted to. And we're going to because we're now ready to put it onto the hat. Alrighty, we're over here at the hat press. I have my temperature set for the same, which is 400 degrees, I mean 300 degrees, I'm sorry. And we're gonna do the full 10 seconds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my hat in there. Line it up as best as I can, because I want it in the center. I'm going to give it a couple second free press just with some protective butcher paper because I'm in the habit of using it. Try to get that hat warmed up just a tad. Okay. If you have, you see any fibers or anything, go ahead and use your lint roller and get those off. Hopefully you guys can see this well. Now we just want to position the hat, I mean the, the letter, right in the center. So this hat has a seam down the center, which makes it great for me to know where to position it. Go so for the full 10 seconds. Whoops, glare, you guys can't see that. Sorry about that. All right, so putting the protective paper might not have been a good idea because it kind of stuck to it. All right. So it's got that grungy look on there. Remember what I said about ruffling up your edges on the last video? You're just going to do the same thing if they look stuck down because you don't want the you don't want the fray look like it's it's stuck down. So just ruffle them up a little bit. All 
All right, and there's there is the second hat, the foil, and it's got the um, it's got the grungy kind of look and effect in there. That's where the black comes from the background. So, and I really kind of like that. I like how that looks. So there's hat number one. Came out great. All right. So we are going to move on to hat number two now. Okay, so the second hat we're, is a black glitter ponytail hat that I got off of Amazon. And I will also share the link for this hat as well. So because it's glitter, I decided I wanted to put um, white glitter on it, but with just a saying across. So we're going to sublimate that. And one of the ways, this is the one few times that they say you can do this, is you can peel off the protective coating off of that, off of the glitter. And I am using the Caesar white glitter. I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use my Teflon sheet for this. And I'm just going to line this up as best as I can. If you notice, I kind of gave myself a very thin outline on my template because it's white, just so I know where to put it. And I didn't want it to stick. So I'm just going to sandwich it in between the Teflon. That way it doesn't stick to anything. And we are going to press for the full 400 degrees for 60 seconds, medium pressure. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and press at the 400 degrees for 60 seconds, medium pressure, light to medium pressure. And we'll be right back when it's done cooking. All right, we're in the last few seconds. Ouch, very hot, be careful. Yay, that looks good. Oops. Well, it'd help if y'all could see. There we go. That looks really good. Now, hold on, let me turn it around for y'all. All right, so there it is. Sorry. So we need to let it cool just a little bit. So we're gonna do that now. All right, so we're gonna stick the adhesive back right over the front of it and see if we can lift it up without ruining it ah. all right all right i think i need to let it cool just a little more so be careful with this guys you don't want to ruin it the good news is i'm going to be putting the raggy patch part around it so we just want to be careful Now, if the Caesar presses for 320 for about 25 seconds, so we can go ahead and press that on a piece of material. So we're gonna take this over there to the other press. Now remember this has its own adhesive already on it, so you don't need to stick any Caesar adhesive like we did the other method. So I'm just gonna stick it right there. I'm gonna stick my Teflon cover over it. Now this is set for 300, so we're gonna let it go just a little bit further. All 
and originally it's 25 seconds so I needed to reset my timer so I'm gonna do that on this next one I'm gonna do it for about 30 seconds oops that was a temperature all right and we're gonna let that cook so it's on there nice and good so so the next part is is we need to rag out the material around it so again for the sake of the video we're just going to fast forward this part All right, our next step is to add our fray check, and this will help keep it from fraying anymore. So we're just gonna put a little bit of dab around the edges. Don't get too close to the fray. You don't want it to be glue and gummy. Oops, turn. Ah, and you don't and you don't need a lot remember all right again they recommend that you let it dry for 24 hours however I've kind of found a little hack which is you can let it sit underneath your press your heated press without closing it and just let it sit there for about five minutes and it will get it uh, it'll dry it for you adequate enough to put the adhesive on so we'll come back when that's done all right it's been about five minutes so we're just gonna see how it's going and it's nice and dry I don't know if you can see this or not all right so now we're ready to put on the adhesive so I'm just going to turn it over and I'm just going to stick it right on there like that put it in between my Teflon sheets and we're going to press for the three seconds if you go a little over guys it's okay I need to clean the sheet tomorrow. All right, so we'll leave that there. Okay, so your adhesive's on there nice and good. And the next step is you can let it cool and then you can take it over to the hat. 
So we're going to go ahead and go over there to the hat press now. All right, so the final step is to go ahead and press this patch on the hat press. I'm using my Heat Press Nation Black Series Heat Press, Hat Press, I'm sorry. And it's got this clip in here, which I really like, that you can push down and clip it into the back of the hat. And that way it holds it nice and securely. Um, the next thing we want to do is because this is glittery, I'm not going to do a pre-press on this. I'm going to let the adhesive do its thing. So I'm going to take the adhesive off and you can see how nice of a thick coat of adhesive is on there. Okay, the sizer stuff is really good, guys. And I'm just going to try to center this with the bill. I'm going to put a piece of paper over it because it's sub. And hope it doesn't shift on me. Oops. Now these hats, these bills kind of get in the way on these, uh, on these hats. So you got to kind of bend the bill down just a tad to get your swing press over it. And then we're going to go down and we're going to press firm pressure for the 10 seconds. Of course the glare won't let you see. All right. And again, just take your fray and kind of grab at it and fluff it up. You don't want it to look flat against the hat. And there you go. And there is a glitter and sublimation raggy pat, raggy hat patch, <laughs> raggy patch hat. There we go. Boy, it looks really, really good though. Love the glitter. And then there's the other one. So really, guys, the, um, the possibilities are endless. I know that it takes a little bit to f do the frame, but that's just part of it to make it look custom. You know, no patch will look identical to another one when you're fraying them. So um, I hope these videos have helped you guys. So do me a favor, go out there and make you some raggy patches and post them and share them in the group. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And don't forget, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.